jobs and prepare for interviews in your desired roles. So the first objective is that every listener or reader of this slide should know the difference between employability and having a degree. Many of you think that so long as you have a degree, then you qualify for a job. There's a big difference between having a degree and being employable. In the next few minutes, I'll talk about that. So you learn the selection process does not start with the interview room. In fact, it may have been concluded before the interview date, and you'll find out why as we go on. That is, some interviews have already been concluded before you show up. And when we say interviews have been concluded before you show up, it's not that they know some people. It's just that you didn't know some things were being considered as they were talking to you. It could be a phone call. It could be a video call. It could be an email. Maybe you got an email from a company that wanted to employ you, and you did not respond within 24 hours. You may have lost the job. Even though you showed up for the interview, but that you did not respond to the email within 24 hours, you probably have lost the job already. But it will still allow you to come. They just want to see you. Okay, let's just see your face. Then, at the end of this short training, you would have seen other unconventional means that interviewers use to interview prospective job seekers. So let's not talk about employability. Employability means to be employable. One of the problems that we have in this generation is that too many job owners or employers of labor are saying that graduates are not employable. The graduates are saying we are employable. We have degrees. We went to Harvard. We went to Yale. In fact, we just came back from Swansea University. And they mentioned all the big universities around the world, including all the big ones that we have in Nigeria. We went to Unilag. We went to Covenant. We went to OOU. We went to IFE. And then they shout, great IFE. Everybody will answer, great. Why are they not giving us job? The problem is employability. What is employability? I won't take all the definitions that I have here, but let me take the last two. The first one is ability to deliver. Then the second one, capacity to match competence and certification. Can you match the degree that you're carrying? Can you deliver what your certificate says you carry? If you're a first class product, when I employ you into my company, can you deliver first class results? That is employability. Do you have a skill that is relevant to my company? If you do not have a skill, then your degree is irrelevant. Unfortunately, in this present time, we have several people who have the degrees, but they don't have the skills. Because you can read and you can pour out. Education today is garbage in, garbage out. So that's why so many people think that because they have the degree, then they must be employable. So that you have the degree does not mean you're employable. The question is, can you deliver? I have to rush because we don't have too much time. So what employability is not? I already said that. It is not your university degree. Employability has nothing to do with the school you attended. It is not the skills and certifications you list on your resume. Employability is simply your capacity to match competence and certification. So even if your certificate says you have taught class, when I give you a chance, prove to me that it was your lecturers who made a mistake. You are not a third class product. In your mind, you are a first class product because your capacity has shown that some people can garbage in and garbage out and the world will say they are first class. But there are people who cannot garbage in and garbage out like other people. But when it comes to doing the job, they can deliver on the job. I have a screenshot that I just want to quickly read to you before I move on. It's the story of Jack Ma. I don't know if you know Jack Ma. Jack Ma is one of the billionaires in the world. And according to Forbes, in the latest ranking, he is worth 29 billion US dollars. But let me tell you before... Let me tell you this about Jack Ma, and I'm quoting him verbatim. Jack Ma said, I failed three times in college. I applied 30 times. How many times? 
I applied 30 times to get a job, but I have always been rejected. When KFC came to China for the first time, we were 24 to apply, and I was the only one to be dismissed. I wanted to go into the police and five postulants. I was the only one not to be accepted. I applied 10 times to return to Harvard University, United States, and I was rejected. That is Jack Ma, Alibaba creator, the 22nd world's richest man, according to Forbes, and he's worth 29.8 billion US dollars. What did he do after all the rejection? He went, sat back, and thought about what he could do. So he started the e-commerce store, like the online stores many of you are patronizing in Nigeria today. And he is now worth 29.8 billion US dollars. I said that to buttress my point that employability is not in your certification. When you are employable, if you don't eventually get the job, you will be able to create the jobs for others to come and apply. Am I speaking to someone? Am I making sense? So let's now go to searching jobs. Because left to me, I barely like to teach, I don't really like to teach people how to look for jobs. What I'd rather do is to teach you how to create the jobs that other would, others will come and apply for. So, searching for jobs. The first thing under searching for jobs is what job seekers should do. Number one, you should have a CV that shows your skill. Then you are supposed to download a professional CV template. Many people just create a CV and there's no point struggling. There are templates on the internet for virtually anything that you want to do. So you can download a professional CV template online to build a good looking CV. Then ensure you use a single font when preparing your CV. Some people want to have designs. There's no point designing your CV. When I'm talking about fonts, I'm talking about the characters of your CV. You know, like Times New Roman, like Arial, like Garamond. Make sure you use just a single font on your CV. And the next thing is, in the B to impress, don't appear overqualified. Do you know that for some of you, the reason you haven't gotten that job is because in your CV, you are overqualified for the job you are applying for. I'll tell you how not to be overqualified in a few minutes time. One of the things you should do that I will say repeatedly is research the company that you're applying to, know the specific role that they want you to fill into. Any experience that is not needed for that role, remove it from your CV. If you don't, you will be overqualified for that job. Then, if possible, have a one-page CV. Many people in the beta over impress, they have several pages of CVs. I remember when I first started out too, my CV was not less than five pages. And that was the brief one. The long one was almost 10 pages. And really, it was a CV. But then I realized that that's not the way to go. So, if possible, keep your CV on a single page. Why? Employers are too busy. They don't have the time to run through all the CVs. Just put the bullet points, the most attractive things. But if you cannot put it on one page, maximum have two pages. Then learn to write cover letters. One of the things that we hardly do in Nigeria is writing cover letters. Many people do not know how to write a cover letter. And that's where they get screened out of the interview process. What is a cover letter? A, a company has said we have this vacancy and we are looking for so, so and so person to fill up the vacancy. When you respond, you don't just send them your CV. The first thing you do is a cover letter. Re vacancy for whatever the title of their own advert was. Then you now say, in response to your advertorial or in response to your advert concerning so, so, so and so vacancy, I am writing to apply or I beg to apply never to disagree, whatever grammar you want to blow. You know, there should be a cover letter. But a lot of people don't do cover letter here in Nigeria. And unfortunately, it's part of the screening process in some companies. Then, the next slide is looking for the job. Please listen very carefully here. Looking for the job. Have an online presence. How many of you have an online presence? You have an online presence. 
Raise your hand. You have an online presence. Okay, you are trying to figure out what I mean by online presence. You're on LinkedIn. Raise your hand. You're on LinkedIn. If you're a professional and you're looking for a job and you're not on LinkedIn, I'm not surprised you don't have a job yet. Because LinkedIn is the professional networking site for job seekers or for job owners or for professionals who may change their jobs or network with other job owners. So if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, please, immediately after this service, look for somebody who has a LinkedIn profile. Go and create your LinkedIn profile. What did I say? It doesn't look like you heard me. What did I say? Go and create a LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is spelled L-I-N-K-E-D-I-N dot com. That's it. Create an online profile. You can say LinkedIn.com. Please make sure that you go and create an online profile. Sometimes your profile counts a lot. And I'll tell you this. I have gotten a job before just by being on LinkedIn. I used to manage the social media accounts of somebody who is very famous. I'll not mention her name. If I mention her name, everybody here knows her. She's very famous. And somebody in another company sent her a mail saying, we have this vacancy in our company. Can you please refer some people? And because I was the one managing her social media accounts, all of her mails would come to me. So I would take the mails and forward to her secretary or the personal assistant. But before I forwarded, because I also needed the job, I had immediately applied and then forwarded the rest of the information to the secretary. Unfortunately, they didn't act on it, but I eventually got that job. In fact, hearing that I was coming from so, -so, -so place, it was almost an instant, and that was how I got the job, because I was online, and I was managing the online account of someone. So, join professional groups online, on LinkedIn, search jobs. Let me tell you something, quickly. Many people don't realize that when you're looking for a job, you don't just go, let me say, you don't just go searching for jobs generally. You can try this when you get home. If you're looking for a job in, in communications, for example, go online, use your search engine, type vacancies in communication, and see how many jobs will come up. Go online. If you're looking for engineering jobs, search engineering jobs. If you're looking for a job in, name the other fields. What other fields? I didn't hear that. Accounting. Just type vacancies for accounting or accountants. You'll be surprised at how many vacancies you will see. But many people don't even know. They just go to one job search engine like I don't want to mention names, but you know all the job search engines, and then you just submit your CV. One of the things you can do is go on search engines, maybe like Google or Ask or some other search engines, and type vacancies in accounting in Nigeria, vacancies in accounting in Lagos, or vacancies in communications in Lagos. You will be amazed at the loads of information that you will see, and you will see them even by their dates. So that's another practical way to search for your jobs. Then acquire professional qualifications. While you're waiting, don't just sit down and wait. Don't just sit down and do nothing. While you're waiting for that job to come, acquire professional qualifications. Get free online degrees. Do you know that there are several websites today that offer free degrees? They offer free online courses. So many people think that, oh, I must always pay for all the courses, but you don't have to pay. There are some courses you can take, in fact, several courses that you can take online. I don't have the list here, but quickly, one of them is Coursera.com. Coursera, C-O-U-R-S-E-R-A, Coursera.com. Coursera then another one is Alison, Alison.com, A-L-I-S-O-N, www.alison.com, or you can check Coursera.com. When you check those two sites, there are free courses, so many courses that you can take. And for a listen, you only have to pay for the certificates. So you don't have to pay for any tuition or whatever it is. But when you're done, just pay for the certificates and you have your degree. So you can do that instead of just sitting and just waiting for a job. Equip yourself in any way 
that you can. Then, practical job search. Practical job search now. Number one, make a list of companies where you like to work. Some of you don't believe this works, but I can tell you it works. Make a list of some companies where you like to work. Be sure that you have some skills that the companies need. Be sure you have some skills that those companies need. Then check the websites of those companies for vacancies. Make a list of the companies where you like to work. Be sure you have some skills that those companies need. Check the websites of the companies for vacancies and apply immediately if they have vacancies. Apply immediately if they have vacancies. Sometimes, some of them don't have vacancies, but they receive their CVs in advance. So, make sure you submit your CVs to their CV banks. Do some research about the company. Do some research about the company, then tell them what value you can add to them if they will employ you. Tell them what value you can add to them if they will employ you. Am I making sense so far? You're not answering. Am I making some sense? 